Hello, so this is going to be a video on quite a famous gun I've got. Um, it's deactivated, sadly, but you know that's the UK law. So this is a Czech VZ or VZ61 Scorpion. Um, and this particular one was made by Bruno, which is quite cool, because, um, you know, Bruno, um, the VZ26, was it? The uh, light machine gun is the one that was, you know, made as the Brennan Enfield, Bruno Enfield, basically, um, by Lee Enfield. So anyway, no, not Lee Enfield, the company's called Enfield, but, but let's talk about this gun. So basically... During the early Cold War, um, we've got the. I'll show you the rack as well in a minute because it's very similar. The um, Czechs wanted a sort of submachine gun slash machine pistol. The idea was have something quite small that was easy for like tank crewmen and everything to carry and wouldn't get in the way. But you know, people who didn't need a proper rifle. Now, as we've discussed before in videos like this, what ended up happening later on in all these countries is you basically just had AKSUs, you know, like short barreled um, sort of folding stock AKs just because it was more convenient. But um, for quite a while, the idea was to have like a very small, compact machine pistol. So the idea with this is that it would basically fit in a big holster on your side. Um, and I think one of the mags this came with was smaller than this one. This is the 20 round mag. But I'm pretty sure this also had like a small mag. And the idea was that when it's in the holster, you have the small mag first. And then you have like, you know, your ammo holster, which has the actual full size mags in. So um, it's a 20 round magazine, it took, um, I think it's 32 ACP, so it's like a little diddy pistol cartridge, stronger than obviously 22 long rifle, but not even 9mm. Um, but the cool thing about this obviously is the stock, so it has this design that I might get to do it in one go, I might not, no, but basically you can slap it sometimes and it will fold all the way if it's well lubricated, but otherwise it's just a two motion thing, you hit it and then do it, and you're meant to obviously not put your hand in front of the muzzle as you do it. So. It's a really compact little submachine gun. Obviously, I think you're meant to hold it like this with, you know, part your hand on the mag, part your hand underneath the handle, because obviously you don't want that to get in the way of that, so you'd have it, hold it a bit like that. It'd be good if there's a little folding front grip, but obviously it doesn't have that. Um, and to charge it, it's ambidextrous, but you just do that. Um, but yeah, so, show you the sight picture. If that's, I'll tell you what, I'll fold the stock back up. To fold the stock, you just push in on these bits, and then, it can fold back over and the little wings of the iron sight are the bit that clips that on so there's your sight picture you've got a 75 and 150 yard sight although 150 yards is going to be quite optimistic for something like this but um the idea was that you know it's just very small and compact so obviously it can be fired like this um so you've got safe in the middle 20 which is obviously fully auto and then one for single so how they've deactivated it, the receivers um, were welded together, but um, this bit still works, you know, like the charging handle, essentially the bolt carrier bit still moves. Trigger moves, but it's disconnected. You might be able to see there, they've welded in a little um, sort of um, bar to stop the rounds feeding in, which seems to be a common thing on deactivated guns now. And this particular one is um, it says SHE 66, so I assume that was manufactured in 1966. D1385 is the serial number. If you can even see that there. If I take the mag out, it might be a bit more obvious. But there, there we go. So as I said, this is just a really cool nifty little submachine gun, machine pistol. Uh, Forgotten Weapons has done some really good videos on this, and the thing that I think always surprises people is just how controllable this is, even on full auto, because of the fact that obviously it shot quite a diddy cartridge. If it was 9mm, it recoil a lot harder. So obviously, I think that's the Czech one, then there's the Polish one that's the PM63 rack, um, which is basically the exact same concept, although this did shoot 9mm Makarov. Now, the rack is definitely the one people like the least out of these two, because it's heavier than the Scorpion. It has that weird slide type thing where it works like an actual pistol. So basically, you know, when you're shooting it, that can hit you in the face if you're not careful. Um, but yeah, that's the nice thing of the Scorpion is just how compact they are. But they were both guns designed for the same job. Um, basically where, um, you know, tank crewmen or like rear echelon troops that weren't expected to be in like direct, you know, shooting kind of contact uh, could have a gun that was better than the pistol. Um, but obviously, yeah, eventually, like we said, in all these countries, you basically had AKSUs that came in. I assume the Czechs actually had a VZ-58 with some sort of folding stock on it, but, yeah. 
for like most of the um, Warsaw Pact countries, although the Scorpion was popular, um, you know, you just go to basically a carbine-like version of the AK with a folding stock, just because it was a lot more practical. Um, but like I said, these are cool little things. Um, there was a couple of export models, I believe, made in different calibers, and there was a 9mm one that came along later. Uh, Forgotten Weapons has done a video on that, and that's quite cool. And then like later on, they did like the modern Scorpions that aren't really that close to these, but um, yeah, it's a cool gun. Like I said, it's just one of those famous Cold War guns. Unfortunately, because of YouTube's uh, policies on these things now, I can't actually tell you where I got this. Uh, just, let's say it was a site in the UK that sells deactivated guns. And it was under £300, which is nice, because, um, like I said, it's quite an iconic gun, so I was surprised that they're actually, you know, relatively cheap compared to some of the things that, you know, are as mass-produced as this, but cost way, way more. But yeah, there you go, so, handy little submachine gun. Machine pistol. But yeah, you do that. Oh, there we go, got it in one. Uh, yeah, but you just slap that, then you've got your stock deployed. Squeeze that to fold it back under, and then it locks. So yeah. There we go, that's me rambling on enough about this, but yeah, it's a really cool thing. Obviously quite iconic from films and um, sort of terrorist type stuff, unfortunately, but yeah, it's, it makes sense why it would be used for like organised crime, terrorism, and like bodyguard sort of stuff, VIP protection, because of the fact it's so small. So, you know, you can, in theory, conceal it in a big coat or whatever, um, where you couldn't conceal a bigger gun. But yeah, as I said, it's a really cool gun. Oh yeah, the serial numbers on that side as well as well as underneath, so there you go. Um, and where they've deactivated this, what they've also done is they've like essentially put a pin and welded it in there, and I think there might have been another weld further back, but basically so you can't open the receiver, because it seems like what they do on a lot of the um, sort of modern European style deacts is, although most of the parts still move, like you can take the mag in and out, it seems they always seem to weld a pin above where the um, like feed is, so a round can't chamber in theory, and also, you know, as well as doing all the stuff like drilling into the barrel and all that. So externally these look quite, um, you know, good in terms of um, all the parts moving, but yeah, annoyingly you can't actually strip them if you wanted to, because they've, um, you know, done a load of welds to the actual main body of the gun, and yes, I know in theory you could drill those out and then, you know, but like I said, I'm not encouraging anybody to do that, because obviously then you're probably breaking all sorts of laws. Because that's the annoying thing, um, just to ramble on a bit more, with one of my AKs, uh, the East German one that has that really bad like paint job on it, where somebody's obviously repainted it afterwards with you know a sloppy kind of uh, load of paint. And I kind of want to um, take that paint off and repaint it, but then I'm actually worried that that might class as, you know, even though it's just painting it, you know, reactivating a gun or whatever. But there you go, that's the Scorpion, enough rambling, um, really cool little bit of technology.